Teresa testified on praise him. Thank you, God, before the walls come down. Brother Chuck testified on the power of praise. That's what I'm preaching on. Hallelujah. Power of your praise. Thank you, Jesus. We don't come to the church of God, to the house of God to come and, and look around and, and to look at everybody, what new outfit they might have on. He said, my house is going to be a house of prayer. And when it's a house of prayer, it becomes a house of praise. I look at when I go down to South Carolina. I love the low country of South Carolina, Charleston, and the different areas. One thing I begin to look at this year, different years in the low country, is some of the slave plantations. And out there on the slave plantation is a little white building made out of wood that is maybe from here to the end of the pulpit. It's not probably not even as wide as this pulpit. It was called Praise House. And when the slaves would work all day in that era, they would go after their long days with calloused hands, after their backs were broken down from the work, after they had lost so much energy in the fields. And they would go to the Praise House, and they would begin to sing a song saying, Come by here, Lord. Just come by here. <laughs> Oh, Lord, come out here. They would say, Lord, we need you today. They could give the praise. And they didn't call them a house of prayer. They called them a praise house. After working sometimes from sun up till sundown from the crow of the rooster in the morning, they would go and gather the slaves and they would begin to worship Jesus because, listen, you can be in bondage in the physical, but you can be set free in the spiritual. And I'd rather be free in the spiritual and be bound in the physical. And so they would go and praise and then we come to church and we we get Sundays off, many of us we don't work at all, and we have to prime and prime and say, oh, you can praise your God, you can praise, and we has been good, we've had plenty of food on the table, our soul's been saved, we're on our way to heaven, our name's written in the Lamb's book of life, and it takes us 30 minutes just to get in praise God, and all the people from the word go, that God's people come in with a praise on their lips and say, you're a good God. Verse 
15. Skip on down to 15. He said, Hearken you, O Judah, the prophet begins to prophesy. O you, Judah, you have of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours. I'm going to skip down to point number three already. The problem with the Christian church is we fight too many battles that we shouldn't be fighting at all. We should give them to God and say, I'm turning it over to you. Tomorrow you'll go down against them, verse 16, Behold, they'll come up by the cliff of Zeus, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeroboam. You will not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face toward the ground. See, there were some that were bowing. And they had their faces on the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. But here's what the Levites did. They begin to fall down and worship when they get the word of the Lord that says everything's going to be okay. But I love what the Levites do in verse 19. And the Levites of the children of the Korathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on Oh, my own. 
Jesus Christ. It takes humility to get down and say, you know what? I need help. I need prayer. I need God. And when you humble yourself before God, then God gives victory to you because you humbled yourself. I was laying last night, I shared with some of you this morning, and I'm sitting there after this long week doing all these, and the devil's beating me up and saying, oh, everybody's had so much faith two weeks ago, and you got along here, these projects, these temple projects, and what an army of people that came out and worked, and the devil's beating me up, and all these people that came out now, we've had to work all week long, we're going to go to church tomorrow, tired, and I'm sitting there, and I said, you know what, I just need to get my mind on the Lord, and I need God just to break me tonight, because my, my mind is not where it should be to minister, and I went home last night, and put some worship music on, laid on my couch for at least a half hour, and I laid there and prayed in the Holy Ghost and said, God, break me, and I just went back to the very basics, I began to think about the cross, and I said, oh, thank you for the blood, thank you that I'm saved, I just went back to the basics, and I said, oh, break me, God, break me, God, break me and mold me, give me brokenness, and it was coming, and I was feeling his presence a little bit, but my son came down. And he sat down beside me on the couch. And all of a sudden, before I know it, I heard the tears come down his face. And the minute it hit him, I started weeping on that couch. And for 40 minutes straight, I'm weeping in the presence of God. And I said, God, break me, break me, break me, God, so I can be a vessel that delivers what you want me to deliver. I cannot deal with something. And I wasn't frustrated anybody last night. I just I frustrated at myself. Help me with the mess that I made. And the Holy Ghost put in my heart right then. Help me, 
Christians have looked at and we make messes on our own, every one of us in this room. And we looked at it and we said, Father, can you help me with this mess I made? And God would say, well, you need to fix it yourself. See, that's our problem. We try to put it back together. But if we say, God, there's a mountain that I cannot move on my own, and there's some messes that I maybe made by myself and made a mistake, the Lord, I realize that the greatest thing that I can do is come into the presence of God and say, Lord, I completely surrender to you because I cannot fix this myself, but by the power of God, I will come through this because I made some messes I can't fix myself, but God is able to do exceeding above it, above all that I ask or think. Did you believe that say amen tonight? What a lot of this nothing when we just simply come to God and we say, Lord, here it is. And I'm just going to say, you know what? I can't fix it myself. I've tried. I've paid money. I've done this and I've done that. But I'm just going to come in and I'm going to come helpless. I'm going to lift my hand and say, God, I have no power to fix this mountain that I'm looking at. I have no power. And you know what it is to you a lot of times? When you will come to that place and say, there will be a lifting of you. There will be this free feeling that says, you know what, God? I cannot fix this, but Lord, you can. So I'm just going to take what I've been carrying around for so long, and I'm just going to give it to you and say, I can't do it on my own. But all things are possible with my God. Lord, it's a bigger street than some of you have said. But Lord, my eyes are fixed on you. <laughs> the bills are coming due, Lord. But my eyes are fixed on you. King Jehoshaphat said, Lord, we don't know what to do. But one thing we do know, we're going to lift our eyes to where our help comes. And we're going to fix our eyes on you. You may say, Lord, I may feel like I'm losing my mind in this battle. But my eyes are fixed on you. They may say that my marriage is over. Sure. 
yours, but it's God's. This thing is a battle. You're not even have to fight it. You don't even have to get involved. And it gives them a word from God that all you've got to do is give this battle to the Lord. But how do we give a battle to the Lord? How do we give a battle to the First of all, we take our hands out of it and we acknowledge that we're helpless. And number two, when God comes along and gives us a word, we hold on to the word of God. But here's what the thing that they did. He said, you know what? When that response, and he began to give them that God's going to move, Jehoshaphat bowed his head, the Bible said, when the prophet gave those words. Listen, stand still and watch what I'm going to do for you. And all of a sudden, they begin to bow themselves in reverence, and they begin to worship. But there were a group of Levites from one of the 12 tribes. And the Levites were the priesthood. They were the praisers. They were the ones out of the 12 tribes that were to praise and handle the, the temple and all the things and handle the spiritual things that Israel was going to do. They were the praisers. They were the worshipers. And God is raising up Levites in this church, in this generation. And he said, you know what the Levites begin to do? They're worshiping in verse 18. But verse number 19 says, and the Levites of the children of the Korathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Jehoshaphat bowed his head. But the Levites began to worship God with a loud voice on high. Listen, what the enemy wants to stop in you when you're in a battle is to stop your praise because your praise is a weapon against darkness. If the enemy had his way, this would be a place where it was like a funeral every single Sunday. But I told you before, we're not coming to bury a dead God. We're here to worship a risen Savior who is alive and seated at the right hand of God. And I didn't come here to attend a funeral, but I come here to praise my God because my God is a Mount moving God. Come on, say amen. amen. Uh, those Levites start praising God with a loud voice. Why they do the loud voice? Because sometimes you've got to be loud. Sometimes you've got to take authority. I don't know why, but sometimes you can be quiet and meditate like I did last night. And there's sometimes you got to take a 40. And when it's midnight in my house, and my wife says, and we begin to pray about issues, and I begin to get loud. I don't know why I get loud. I feel that, that authority. And like Brother Matt was testifying, when you begin to feel that authority in you, you begin to feel that power of God in you. It makes you want to raise up a loud voice from on high to our God. Why? Because it's complete confidence in saying, you know what, Lord? I prayed about this, but now I'm going to pray. For this, because I'm going to win this battle not by my might, but by the power of the Almighty God. I'm going to win this battle not because I did anything right, but because I'm serving the mighty God. I didn't come to be the underdog and to come back in the ninth inning, down five runs and in the grand name to barely sweep it out. I'm the victor. He said, I'm the head, not the tail. He said, I'm healed. He said, I'm free. And so God. And so he saw a praise, and so that when they went out to battle the next morning, he said, you know what? Verse 20, there was early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you'll be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. I thank God for the prophets. Anybody else can you say Amen. I thank God there's apostles, teachers, prophets, evangelists, evangelists, and pastors. And I thank God that there's prophets in this church. When it got a hold of Kelly two weeks ago, he began to operate in the prophetic anointing. He was saying things that me and these gent people had only talked about ourselves. And he began to say things to them and operate in the spirit that I knew he was he was on target because I talked to those individuals about things. I knew it was the Lord. But you know what God said? I want you to believe this prophet. That man of God that said, we're not going to have to fight. Israel believed that man that says, you'll just have to stand still. But here's what he did. The Bible said he consulted with the people. He appointed singers unto the Lord that, that, that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. He said, army, all you guys with weapons, you get in the back. But I want the people with the praise that is on their lips to get out in front. And I want the praisers to get out in front. You know what he was saying is, we're so confident in God, we're putting the guys with weapons in the back, and we're going to put the praisers in the front, and we want them to magnify God with a loud voice on high, and praise Him in the beauty of holiness. There's sometimes you got to say, God, I'm looking at a mountain, and I'm looking at a mess, but 
Teresa didn't just testify to you know what? Sometimes you've got to believe that mountain, that wall's going to fall even before it comes down. Sometimes you've got to thank the Lord for a good report even before the report comes. Sometimes you've got to believe that your answer is in the mail. Say, well, I've got a lot of bills to do and I've got a lot of things ahead of me. And you, this is why each day I'm coming. I'm so discouraged and I can't praise God tonight. Because I'm in this. Sometimes you got to come to the house of God and say, Lord, I'm going to give you a proactive faith, a praise. I'm going to give you a faith praise that says, I don't know how it's going to get fixed because I can't fix it, but I do know how to praise you, Lord. And so I'm 